Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 9 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And today we will be sending our first probes to the moon. Or moon and most likely Minmus. So... Without further ado, let us start designing the probes. The goal of the probe is to go into the moon's sphere of influence, uh, gather as much science as possible, and basically come back to the Kerbin and it, we want it to land because we don't want it to transmit, we want really to gather all that sweet science and actually obtain it. So I'm putting remote tech antennas, I'm putting some science experiments as much as I can. Something like that. And um, yeah, while designing this craft, and this is obviously a post commentary, <coughs> I did make a one tiny design flaw, which I wasn't aware at the time when I was building it. And I will let you guess in the commentary what that flaw was. What that flaw was. So I'm putting now the batteries also now we want to put the solar panels hold on yep some solar panels because why not a little bit more batteries just to be on the safe side I think that should do nicely Yeah. All right. So this is what our science probe should look like. So nothing really fancy, just yeah. And now I want to put it in a fairing. That's it. And let us see. We can use these from KW Rocketry. Oh, and now I realize I want to put the one SAS or reaction wheels unit. But I want to put it, yeah, we're using the tweak scale, so it's like this big. Sure. And that should give our first stage enough oomph to actually deploy this. So. Let us see, 2.8 and then 5.07. I'm kind of thinking that we need a little bit more oomph to actually be able to deploy this one. So 5.6 altogether. I think we need a little total of around 6,000 and something Delta V to deploy things on the moon. So I'm gonna first put a small transfer stage and on top of that, I will put the main boosting stage, so something like this, mm -hmm. fair enough, and if I slap a couple of boosters at the bottom, I think that should be more than enough, and I'm probably over-engineering this, but still, hey, it's Kerbal Space Program, we're supposed to over-engineer things, it's the Kerbal way after all, so something like that and 6008 yeah I think that should be more or less acceptable mm -hmm. okay and double checking our staging adding some control fins to make sure that our craft is controllable on the ascent and as I said this will be science probe that I will be sending both to moon and to Minmus However, I will probably only guys show the one going to the moon because, I mean, there is no really point of me repeating itself. So maybe Minmus I'll just keep as a 
like a couple of highlights showing that I've been there so I don't kind of repeat it over and over after all we don't want the se series to be boring so okay we are building two of them and let us recondition the launch pad from the previous launch which has been the communications network which will hopefully enable this little expedition and right now we're not really focusing on any polar orbit or anything like that it's just going to the moon just get into the sphere of influence gather as much science as we can and then basically get out and we need this to be able to unlock bigger craft to be able to go on the moon mission so let us launch everything looks looks to be pretty nominal nothing strange here I'm posting all launches a little bit time accelerated manner because I mean you've seen me do doing this if it would be something crazy then I would maybe put it a little less accelerated however this rocket looks really standard so figured might as well put it a little bit faster by the way please do let me know in the comments if you um, like the fact that I'm also designing ships in the series in front of you it is a little bit time accelerated because I don't do it be to be too boring for you but uh, I figured in my previous series I would just show you the craft and then pilot it but I think then I would be missing out on the one very nice and one big aspect of the KSP which is actually engineering which I thought might also be interesting let me know what you think in the comments below so, deploying the panels, deploying the remote tech antennas, and now we will see if the communications network that we have really designed is any good. Coasting to the apoapsis, and then we will be burning for the circularization. Every, everything looks pretty solid. And let us trigger the next step stage oh, well just a second we need to first yeah circularize a bit more yeah and the apoapsis let's make it perfectly circular so that it will be easier for us to launch so let us enable the flight computer and we want to point towards the node and hold maneuver prograde so execute in three minutes we need 41 delta v and in this stage we have 159 which is more than enough Okay, coasting to the apoapsis and and execute in five or five, four, three, two, one, execute. Yep, and we are in 116 by 114 kilometer orbit, which is very decent. Not gonna complain here. So time to set up the transfer to the moon however before we do that I want to make sure that I have enabled my communication dish always set up your antennas before the transfer burn it's very easy once you actually execute the transfer burn that you just hit time acceleration to get towards the planet and then if you haven't set your antennas correctly you would be in trouble so Now setting up a transfer orbit, fiddling a little bit with the maneuver node to get a nice moon encounter. And it will be 600 or 818 delta V, which uh, we have more than enough 
to do that and come back. So we want to be pointing our craft to the maneuver node and starting to burn slightly and now you have you have a chance to witness what did I actually goof up. Um, if your guess was no reaction wheels on the topmost stage then you have guessed correctly. Which makes my life a little bit more complicated because I will ne be needing to control my craft using the engine gimbaling rather than the just nicely pointed to the correct destination and fired the rockets. So I'm now struggling at this point to actually turn the craft. I, when I was creating using this probe core I did not pay attention because in 090 until then every single of these guys had their own reaction wheels. However this one doesn't. So, um, yeah, 090 hit me on the head. Anyway, I'm waiting until my craft rotates to a suitable position and then I will be once again preparing everything for the burn towards the moon. So now I'm just setting up again the maneuver node for the next orbit though and I'm trying to see that I maintain a correct orientation manually by um, my plan is slightly before the burn to s set s the actual okay so the gravity scan yeah we might as well get it so my idea is to slowly thrust using the engine and while it's thrusting adjust for the actual um, orientation on the fly. Might not be the brightest choice but I mean what are my options and I've already designed two craft that will be going to Moon and to Minmus. So yes, not what you would call exactly the smartest design choice but it's a choice I have to live with since the crafts are already in production. So. And now you can see me slowly thrusting and very very carefully and very very painfully aligning my craft towards the actual maneuver node. Fortunately we have a little bit delta V to spare so no harm no foul. And once I get close I basically just want to punch it. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah, now we can come a little bit closer and once I'm closer to the node just hit the accelerator button and hope that my orbit will be, final orbit will be decent. So, alright and we have some 16 seconds to the burn and I'm burning with half thrust because I'm scared what happens if I touch any of the controls. So far seems to be working okay so lack of the SAS is a minor annoyance rather than a big boo-boo. If for example the engine below would not have been the 909 but the LVT-30 which doesn't have a gimbaling I would be thoroughly messed up and forced to abandon the mission. This way mission is still a go it will just be a little bit more Kerbal than I originally anticipated. So okay going a little bit I'm trying to thrust very very carefully so that I get a little bit closer encounter and I'm now doing the gravity scan even at this distance the gravity scan picks up the distinct whatever save and seems that our communication network although doesn't look 
completely set up, it's still doing its job fairly decently, so... We're coming in within almost the range of Moon's sphere of influence. So now I want to set up a maneuver node to set ourselves in the orbit around Moon. So, and I want to come as close to Moon as possible. So now I'm a little bit fiddling with the maneuver node. Because all the changes that we do here will take a, l a lot less delta V than it they would once we get to the Moon's sphere of influence. So now let's see, accelerate a little bit more. Okay, uh, I think this would be nice. Get a nice tight moon apoapsis and uh, more or less, yeah, I th I liked. Good. But I might actually take a different orbit and yeah get also a carbon free carbon return trajectory I was experimenting with different setups until I found the one that works for me so came here and it's not a big burn it's 119 delta V so let us just go ahead with the burn Yep, there we go. Kill the maneuver node and let us get within the moon's sphere of influence. And a little bit time warping so we can see the moon approaching, hopefully. Adding an alarm for the sphere of influence change. Gravity scan. <clears throat> and there we go now bit by bit the scientists back at the KSC are using their data to build an accurate gravitational model of the moon well we will need it multispectral analysis as a survey contact closer scan will provide more detailed look at the surface Mr. Igu you very briefly consider fill one of those canyons with the goo Add a maneuver node, and here I'm kind of just tweaking our periapsis. To be as nice and tight as possible, because we really want to be getting all of the near science around the moon. Hi Moon! Soon we will be visiting you with the Kerbal Cruise. Now I'm just trying to figure out why don't I have a connection. Ah, there we go. Basically the main satellite wasn't in the correct position. So now we have again a connection and I'm just slowly thrusting to make sure. All right. Cool. Oops, might have overdone it because my periapsis is now negative. So I have to correct it. Okay, periapsis height 19 kilometers. I'll live with that. Shutting down the engine temporarily. So I don't accidentally hit something else and at the periapsis we want to have it circularized. Well, not exactly fully circularized, but more like high-low combination of the orbits so that we can gather both si near and far science. Now we're closing in. And pretty soon we should be getting some alerts for, yeah, gravity scan. The results are back and Kerbin's Highlands are in still in the first place. Suck it, Moon! Yeah, clearly. 
and we are now have more temperature scan while waiting for the temperature scan to finish you sketch the patterns made by moon's canyons keep the data gravity you, s you diligently record the gravitational data low over the moon highlands along that anything that makes it landing easier definitely uh, an initial surveys conducted closer scans will provide a more detailed look at the surface keep the data mystery goo the goo seems as excited as you are being this close to the moon of course this is the first time that we're here well this is a very very valuable data because it will help us in terms of designing the lander craft that we will be sending in the future episodes so I thought it is only fair that first time you send a probe and then actually you before the man mission so we would be do now doing a couple of orbits and uh, first of all we want to circularize or basically make sure that we are get out of that escape trajectory but Gravity scan from you are not too sure which of the scary looking numbers and letters on the screen are relevant to your situation. So you write them down and send them to off to the guys back at the KSC. Yeah, let them figure out what's going on. Recording of the knee IR radiation are indicative of high silicate concentrations. Well, whatever. <laughs> Let us activate the engine and slowly while the engine is activated I'm thrusting until I get back in the position where I want it to be and yeah the lack of SAS is really making my orbits Kerbal. Okay well I'm in orbit around, we are definitely in the orbit around moon, so. Let us time warp to the next experiment. Oh. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should enable really this to be stop hold the warm on the experiments because I mean we're really here for the science so and we are losing electric charge hopefully we will come out of the planet's shadow or the moon shadow oh gravity scan watching the graviolis work incredibly satisfying even you aren't too keen on the math involved yeah let the graviolis work on their own Okay, we have regained the connection to the KSC. The moon looks really beautiful from this distance. My kind of reasoning is first build an accurate gravitational model to be able to design landers and then maybe even send some scan set probes. So the scan set probes that I would be sending in maybe future episode would help us determine to find the actual landing site for our man mission. Now. Oops. Yeah, going back and forth is a little bit tricky with this one, so... Do we have any more signs on this pass?
Yeah, definitely let's put this globally on and always because otherwise I'm just gonna be making circles without anything doing. And global alert always, yeah, sure. Why not? Mm, here we go. Gravity. Gravitational anomalies below don't seem to fit the unusual explanation of both saltic lava flows. The scientists at KC determined to find an alternative theory. Analysts of the UV and R spectra of these two craters indicate that they are the product of two very different types of meteorites. Gravity scan. The twin crater gravitational signature is quite unique, not surprising considering its unique features. Alright. Keeping all of the data. I mean, we could transmit it immediately, but we will get way more science if we recover the probe. Your gravity map is showing the Midlands crates as small anomalies at the general background. Could there be a link between the formation of the craters and the moon's gravitational field? Pfft, hmm, beats me. Gravity scan from Highlands. You transmit back data to the KSE. Perhaps they can send you back something useful after they process the information. Yeah, well, the only thing that I can think of that would be useful in this situation are actually more, uh, more snacks on the manned mission. Because this mission certainly takes its sweet time. And I think it's time for our probe to return. I mean, we've already done a couple of orbits and we gathered... Well, we haven't get, gathered all the science there is, but then again, we don't even have all the experiments. So something we will have to leave for our Kerbals when they come back to actually gather. So now I'm just trying to set up a burn that will hopefully bring our periapsis inside of the atmosphere. So once when we actually get back to Kerbin, we are already on the descent trajectory, hopefully. So, we have more than enough Delta V, so that's clearly not an issue. And let us orient our craft and start thrusting. And right now I'm just pointed the wrong way, but now I'm pointing in the correct direction and I'm thrusting to bring our periapsis to the roughly 20,000 if possible. So a couple of hundreds and 21. That's excellent in my book. So let us just time accelerate <coughs> as we are getting out of here. Oh, gravity scan? Why not? Reading nominal, it's a crater on the moon. What did you expect? I don't know what I would expect around the moon's east crater. Another gravity scan. Hmm. And I was unable to catch that one, sadly. Okay, we are progressing towards the escape trajectory from the moon's orbit. And on the route back home. Alright. So, a little bit more. Bit by bit. Okay, what's going on? Oh, I'm in only one time time acceleration. That's the problem. Okay. Aha, the 
Kerbal alarm clock basically giving me a hard time. Okay, okay. Accelerate and make an SOI change. Yeah, here we go. And time to accelerate to get to the actual atmosphere of Kerbin. And we're going home. Oh, but we have gravity scan. The massive mountain range below registers on your gravitational scanner as you fly by. Just another day in the life of an astronaut. Or more likely a probe. But yeah, whatever. So we're looking at the moon giving it our final goodbye. At least from the perspective of this probe. And we will be going to Kerbin. As soon as I manage to find it actually on the night sky. I'm pretty terrible when it comes to orientation. Ah, there we go. It looks so small from here. Gravity. The sensor gives a very negative readout as you pass over the Badlands. Yeah, the sensor clearly doesn't like the Badlands as I do. Whoa. Maybe overdid it on the time acceleration back there, as my textures glitchy would agree, I guess. And we're coming in, so I want to make sure that I have armed the parachute while I still have a connection to the probe, and I'll probably want to pack the solar panels and the communication dishes because I want to save them for the future launches. Otherwise, if we went to the atmosphere and actually didn't pack them, we would essentially be uh, in trouble because they would snap and break off during the re-entry. So going deeper and deeper into the atmosphere, time to withdraw our antenna. I'm just double checking if I have disarmed the parachute, pointing the vessel retrograde and we pack the antenna and I just making a quick save because last time when I was trying this I was hit by a Kraken and basically lost all the data that I've been making thus far so yeah I reserve the right basically to use quick save and quick load in case of a crack and hit or some bug. I will of course not use them if it something went wrong due to my error or a design error or whatever. So getting crispy into the atmosphere, we did have a pretty shallow entry. So pretty valid, but we are also at the orbital velocity, so Okay, parachute is pre-deployed, slowing us down significantly. And I'm just kind of warping until I get... And I think I will be probably landing at the mountain, so I just hope that I don't get into a tumbly hell and get into some serious problems, so... Almost there. Parachute deployed successfully, slowing us down, hopefully enough, but if not, we have still some delta V in the rocket to further decelerate our descent. But, uh, yeah, then I forgot that I do not really have the control, because I don't have the connection to the satellite, so, ouch. Yeah, well, let us see if we can gather the temperature scan. Temperature reports a chilly minus 15 degrees. You're glad to inside the nice warm spaceship with snacks. The mountain seems to be too far and large and sturdy to be shaken by anything, so you set up the sensor anyway to appease the folks back at the KSC. 
Yeah, the, the funny thing is that you can gather the science despite not having connection. That's kind of strange. The barometer is very high here. You aren't surprised because the mountaintop nearly pierces the clouds. Oh, of course it does. And the gravity scan. On a solid ground, you are able to detect the faint anomalies of the gravitational field caused by the mountains you're standing on. The guys back at the KC will be excited. Well, good for them. And it's time to recover the craft, which brings us pretty much towards the end of this episode. Um, I hope that you have liked the video. If you did like the video, please do like the video. And for the future updates of the interplanetary voyage of exploration make sure that you hit that subscribe button as you can see we have gathered 825 science thank you very much for watching this is gramforks signing off